Alright, hi everybody and thanks for tuning in to another costuming tutorial brought to you by Costumers for Christ. If you ask any costumer what the most important part of a costume is, especially if you're talking about a character like Batman here, they will tell you it's the mask. Now you can go on eBay or Amazon and you can look up Batman cowls and you'll find a, a good assortment of custom made, custom sculpted Batman cowls that typically range from $200 to $300. And if you're costuming on a budget, then that might be a little bit out of your price range. Unfortunately, the alternative is to buy licensed Batman cowls from Ruby's Costume Co. And they usually look about like this. It's like Batman's head got run over by the Batmobile. And when you put them on, they don't look a whole lot better. See what I'm talking about? But, in just a few minutes, I'm going to show you how to go from this to this. Why don't you come in here and get a good look. Ready to get started? Let's go. Alright, in order to accomplish this transformation, you only need a few simple tools. Number one is a balloon. You can buy these little bags of balloons at Walmart or other places like that for 99 cents. And you want the kind that's, that blows up to about 13 inches. You'll also need a pair of scissors and some Gorilla Glue. Normally I would recommend uh, Gorilla Glue Gel, but this is just regular Gorilla Super Glue. It works uh, also. And then finally, and perhaps most important, you're going to need a can of Plasti Dip. You can get this at Ace Hardware or some other hardware places like that or order it online. Um, it only costs about $10. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our balloon and then we're going to take this crumpled up, ugly looking Batman cowl, and we're going to blow the balloon up inside of the head. And the reason we do that is to stretch out all the latex so that it can kind of return to its original shape. And I'll show you what that'll look like here in just a second. to be nice and snug you'll notice that it's kind of rounded around the back and you want the bot the um, the tie part of the balloon to be coming out right where your chin would come out that's the closest to the actual shape of the head and so we're just going to tie that off and now we're going to leave this overnight uh, you want to give it maybe 24 hours and so we're just going to set this down let Batman take a break here for a while and we'll come back to him in a little bit all right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, it has been uh, almost 24 hours since I set the Batman cowl down here, so we're going to take the balloon out now. And I just killed Adam West. There we go. All right. Now that's done quite a bit of good in helping to restore the original shape of the cowl here. You'll notice that the ears are still all messed up, dented in and kind of crooked here. I forgot to mention yesterday one other thing you're going to need is some high density foam. This is usually used in upholstery, chairs and stuff like that. You can get that at Joann's or Hobby Lobby uh, and it's not too expensive. You want to cut out a couple of pieces in the shape of the ears and then you're going to take that and stuff it up inside each ear. Make sure you get it stuffed all the way up in there as snug as you can. And it may still have a little bit of wrinkling or a dent or something in that ear even after stuffing the high density foam inside of it. And that's okay because those will come out once we paint it. I'll get to that in a minute. So now that you've got your cowl ears stuffed, uh, Latex has been stretched. The next thing you want to do is trim away this neck. The neck on this cowl is bulky and short. Uh, I don't know who modeled it, but it's not going to fit most people. So I recommend just trimming it away entirely, and we're going to go with a neckless Batman cowl. You're going to take your scissors, and you're just going to follow the jawline all the way up to the ear. And 
and then you're going to kind of, as you go across the back of the head, you want it to, to curve a little bit, making sure that you go over this spot here where the slit in the back goes up to, and then start curving back down a little bit as you come up to the other ear. And then once again, just follow that jawline all the way around back to where you started. Now we've got all this excess latex. Don't toss that out because it's useful. We'll get to that in a minute. I can probably take this tag off of it too while we're at it. Now at this point you want to try the cowl on and kind of see uh, how it fits and if it's snug enough and that kind of thing. You'll notice on me that this chin strap is a little bit looser than it should be. You know, I, I'm going to want that to be tighter than it is. So what we're going to do, we're going to take that back off again. And we're just going to trim out a part of this chin strap. Start small, because you can always trim out more, but if you trim out too much, you can't take back what you've done. So I take out about a little bit less than an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch around that strap. And now you'll notice it's open here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a small scrap piece from the leftover latex off the neck, cut that off, and this is where our super glue comes in. And this is why it's important to use Gorilla Glue, because Gorilla Glue is specifically designed to work with rubber. And so you can get that, and it will adhere to the latex much better than any other kind of glue that I know of. So you just take a little bit. You don't need a whole lot. Glue it together. Press it firmly to one side. Now be careful because the glue can seep through the latex and glue your thumbs or fingers to the uh, latex and you don't want that. So just kind of keep pressing and moving your fingers and if you feel it seeping through just watch that spot and take your fingers away. And then do the same thing with this other side here. And don't worry if you've got some latex hanging off the edge or whatever, that's okay. You can just come back and trim it off. Make sure you press that down firmly. This stuff only takes a few seconds to dry, so that's good. But once it's dry, you're going to take your scissors and you're going to trim that back into a decent looking shape. You just want to level it off. And while you've got your scissors out, Go ahead and do any other trimming that you think needs done. A lot of times when this comes straight from the manufacturer, uh, there are edges that weren't trimmed very neatly, and you can go back over those. One thing that I always do is I go out and I trim this nose out. This has a little lip that hangs down under your nose, and it puts pressure on there. It makes it a little hard to breathe. It gets steamed up. But you can just trim that right out, and you should be fine without it. I've got a rather large nose and it still fits me just fine without that strap there. It fits better actually. So here we go. This is how it looks now without the nose piece and with everything trimmed away. Try that back on. Be careful not to try it on too soon. You don't want to glue it to your chin. And now we're starting to get back to a decent looking shape here. Now, if your head is even smaller than mine, 
what you're going to want to do in addition to that is right along the back here trim out a small triangle you want it to be narrow but long and you just trim that triangle out and then you'll pull those two edges together kind of like this it'll look better with the piece trimmed out but that's kind of what you'll do is you'll pull those two edges together and then you'll just take another one of these scraps and glue it to the back to make a solid back for it just like we did with the chin strap now if you've got like a 23, 23 and a half inch head then you won't need to do that but if you've got a 22 inch head or you know if maybe if you're making it for a child then you'll have to do that in the back as well in order to get the right kind of fit now the last thing that you want to do is coat it with Plasti Dip. So you're going to put it on a stand or a mannequin head. It's a good idea to put like a, a Walmart bag or shop, other shopping bag, something like that, over your mannequin's head before you paint. Uh, that way you don't paint your mannequin head every time you do. Uh, if you don't have a mannequin head, you can just get some kind of a stand. Uh, anything that's round that will help the top keep its shape and then uh, and then follow the instructions on the Plasti Dip. Uh, you want to do three to four maybe even five coats in order to get it just right and the Plasti Dip is a very important step because you'll notice on this cowl the nose is still kind of crooked you've got a little bit of denting in the ears and this doesn't quite run a hang right that stuff will all automatically fix itself as you coat it with the Plasti Dip. See, the Plasti Dip not only gives it a, a nice, dark, rich color, but it also contracts as it adheres to the latex. And that forces the cowl back into its original shape. So it, it makes this look a hundred times better once it's coated in five three to four, five coats of Plasti Dip. Now I'm not going to spray this one now. In fact, I might paint this one blue just to have something different. But this is the exact same cowl right here, which you can see has already been finished. This has been coated in three coats of Plasti Dip. And this is how it looks when it's all done. Much better than we started off with. You can see the ears are pretty straight, there's no dents in it, there's no wrinkling, um, and you've got a really decent, good looking cowl for just 35 bucks and supplies. Uh, thanks for everybody to wa for watching. Uh, if you're interested, uh, I might do a tutorial on how to make the uh, hood and cape as one piece to go along with this mask, uh, or if there's something else you're interested in learning about, just leave a note in the comments. Thanks again.